Valorant, a game made by Riot Games, that was created to be a competitor in the tactical FPS genre, which was dominated by CS since the genre's conception. From the first showing of the game, people noticed its similarities to its predecessors. Seeing this, when the launch came, organizations made rosters mostly comprising of ex-CSGO professional players. Knowing that Riot Games will support the competitive scene from the track record, which was won at the time. The organization G2, formerly known as Gamers2, was founded on the 24th of February 2014 by a former League of Legends professional player, Carlos Ocelot Rodriguez Santiago, who wasn't like most CEOs, as he was much more free speaking, on camera and open about his thoughts, which is to be expected from a gamer. Like most, they had a plan of getting a strong roster from the start of the game's competitive scene to mark their place in the game's history. Their first roster started off with the announcement of Mixwell as the first player and captain for the roster. His role was to be the duelist and main operator. He was quite known in CSGO for being a talented player that never got to play to his full potential. After that came Paditek, who was the controller player. Also a former CSGO pro player who most notably played for the Isaaco Boars. After that, the next announced player was Pith, who is known mostly from CSGO for playing in the legendary organization NIP. The fourth pickup was that of Ardis, who was also a CSGO pro player, having played an endpoint and being accused of cheating, which was cleared. The final player announced for the roster was David P. His most notable team was Heretics in CSGO, he was to mostly play Sage for the roster. And thus the full team was assembled. The first official tournament they played at was the Vitality EU Open. This tournament was this team's start of the absolute dominance of the region. They only lost two games the whole tournament, dominating the competition, though the tournament wasn't stacked. Most notably, the less known players in Paditek and Ardis proved themselves to be amazing players. David P was a stand-in for this tournament, but after his lights out performance he was made an official part of the roster. This absolute domination continued for a whole month without losing a single series, until a team called FPX led by a CSGO veteran finally got the number of G2. Unsurprisingly, it was a 2. Oh. Though, even after that, the team made it to Grand Finals for a runback. But this time, they won 2-0. -oh. 
the domination of the European region continued without losing a single series or a tournament. Level Clash 2 last invitational with a close final and then came the first official Valorant tournament, First Strike. This was the first Valorant tournament series to crown a regional champion. Of course, three 2 were clear favourites to win this event. They started off hot by absolutely destroying in playoffs, winning every best of one until they got to Nip, where the best of threes started. Nip were on a hot streak to get into quarterfinals, but even playing well didn't save them from the gamers too, who won the series 2-0. Then came Orgless, better known as Prodigy, who also just couldn't stop the gamers too. After that they made it to semi-finals, where the next opponent was Team Heretics, who had just recently lost to Nip, so the results went as expected. But that was just a hiccup, there's nothing to worry about, see? They're warmed up now, so split will be easy. Utility. Nuki finds his fourth on the round now. Well, what a depressing end of the year. And thus, G2 weren't the best in EU. Well, by the leaderboards they were, but not at heart. Even if they had won literally all of the Ignition Series tournaments. After this disappointing loss, David B was benched from the team, and to replace him, Zeke was picked up who is a retired Fortnite player, most known for his time on Ago. The first event with this new player went great, winning against Nip in the semi-finals and Team Liquid in the finals. After this, the next big regional tournament was VCT Stage 1 Masters. Very bad naming, very confusing. But to get there, each team had to qualify through challengers in their respective region. There were three qualifiers. The first one was an open bracket, where the top four get through to the quarterfinals of the second qualifier, while the other spots are filled through another open bracket, and the four best from there get into regional masters, which is VCT stage 1 masters. There was also a third chance, where the top four who didn't make it through the second qualifier get invited to, where again the top four make it through. G2 blasted through playoffs of the first qualifier all the way to quarters, where they met Nip, a familiar opponent that G2 had never lost to, so there was nothing to worry about. <sighs> Thankfully, there was another chance. Holding heads up high, they prepared themselves for the second open qualifier, having not made challengers too, where they, as expected, ran through playoffs to face a familiar foe. It was Nip again, but this time, they were prepared. Having watched what went wrong in the last series, G2 prevailed in losing even worse. Though there was still one more chance. So With that, they did not make it to stage 1 masters, showing signs that their reign over the EU region was coming to an end. VCT stage 2 masters was not long after, and this time the stakes were higher, because the tournament that was coming up was the first international one, so the chance to redeem themselves wasn't far away. As always, G2 strided to play off. F <coughs> Never mind that. There's always VCT Stage 2 Challengers too. Sheesh, what a mouthful. Though, the difference here was that they had to play with a stand-in named Ozzy. Because Zeke's performances haven't been the best. His father reportedly had COVID, so that could have been the reason. Yada yada yada, they got their playoffs and got their rematch against Vitality. And we know how good G2 are at rematches, especially with a stand-in. So they won this time. After that, something incredible happened. They lost to Fnatic 0-2. So they didn't qualify for the big international event, Masters Reykjavik. The competition had surpassed them. And after these disappointing results, G2 knew they had to make some changes. So that they did. And boy, did they make big ones. First off, they parted ways with Ardis, Palitech and Zeke. And after that, they signed Nuki, Avova and Kuldamenta. Nuki was mostly known in CSGO for his time on Hellraisers. And Kuldamenta was a former PUBG Pro player. This roster only had one game, and it was against Finest, that they lost 1-2. And after that, Pith was benched, and replaced by Kellox, an up-and-coming young talent. With this roster, they were preparing for VCT EU Stage 3 Challengers 1. Like, there has to be a better naming system. 
This time, the qualification was different, with the EU qualifier going into EMEA challengers, as almost always, they blasted through playoffs, winning against Vitality and Fnatic, before sadly getting absolutely decimated by FPX. Thankfully, this event was run differently than the others. This one had an upper and lower bracket, so G2 was sent to the lower bracket. The first opponent was Rix.GG Thunder, where they won quite convincingly. After that came the rematch against Fnatic, which was a 2-0, but extremely close on the second map, which was only possible because of Mixwell. And then came another rematch against the team which put them in lower bracket, FPX. This series started with Bind, which narrowly went the way of G2. Then came Icebox, which was even closer, but sadly, FPX clinched this one out. After that came the deciding map, Haven, which was a blowout by G2. Though this was not the end. This next game decided if G2 had to play in the open bracket for the VCT Stage 3 EMEA Challenger Playoffs, or if they get to pass to the upper quarterfinals. The series was against Guild Esports. Would G2 have a losing record against? Because, well, they lost a game against them at first strike, but then Guild got forfeit because they used an exploit, so nobody knew what to expect. The first two maps were quite convincing wins, the first for Guild and second for G2. But then Haven came, giving us a nail biter with Guild taking it in a close fashion. After that was Icebox, where the game got close again, going to overtime, where G2 took it. The last map went the way of G2 by a landslide, and with that, their qualification to the upper quarter finals of the playoffs was confirmed. This tournament wasn't over yet, that was still the losers finals. And now came the Grand Finals against Ascend, who were absolutely dominating this tournament. But G2 weren't no slouches. They went on to get absolutely decimated the first two maps, before showing signs of life on the third. But sadly, that wasn't enough, as Ascend won on the fourth. Even so, this was a major improvement by G2. It seemed as if this roster had what it takes to get back to the top of EU. After a month of preparation came the VCT Stage 3 EMEA Challengers Playoffs. Their winner side quarterfinals match was against Oxygen Esports, who they decimated on the first map, and while things got close in the second map, they still clutched it out. The semi-final match was against Supermassive, who they got decimated by on the first map, but on the second map they got one round more. Than on the first. So let's look at the bright side of things. With that, they were sent to the lower bracket, where their first opponent was Giants Gaming, who resided an old teammate, David P. This series started off rough for G2, resulting on a loss on the first map, but they pulled together and just ran through the other two maps with ease. Oh my god. The next match was against Gambit, who were making a case for being the best team in EMEA. With the first two maps going either way, the last map was a nail biter, but G2 lost, and with that, the run ended. But they still made it to Masters Berlin. Oh yeah, did I not tell you that the top 4 teams from EMEA make it? Huh, weird, guess I forgot. This was a great result. This is almost the biggest tournament in Valorant. The only one that's bigger is Champions, and to get qualified there, you have to win Masters Berlin. The other option is to go through your region's last chance qualifier if you didn't accumulate enough circuit points throughout the other three stages. You know, it isn't as complicated having seen it at the hundredth time. The group G2 was put in was quite a good one for them. This group only had three teams. This was less than in the other groups, which all had four teams. This group had G2, Sentinels, and F4Q, and two teams get to go through, so yeah, F4Q lost all of the games. G2 and Sentinels got through, though, to give F4Q credit, they did take a map against G2 and Sentinels, so that's that. G2 got through groups and into quarterfinals, where their opponent was Crew Esports. 
This game went quite smoothly for G2, winning 2-0, but then came a chance for redemption. Their next opposition was Gambit. This series started off close on the first map, where both teams were going at each other's throats. But in the end, Gambit won Breeze. The second map was Icebox, and both teams had the exact same agent composition. So this was a true show of skill. And lo and behold, Gambit absolutely dismantled G2 in every sense of the word. They weren't even given a chance to fight back, and G2 became the first ever team to get 13 owed in an international tournament. With this, their master's run came to an end. But this result wasn't bad. Getting to the semi-finals of a master's tournament isn't an achievement to be scoffed at. Plus, they still have a chance to get to champions through the last chance qualifier. After a month of practice, G2 were ready to go into the last chance qualifier. Their first opponent was Anubis, who they won against. Then came Foot, who were another Turkish team, same as Supermassive. The series didn't start off well with a loss on Icebox. The second map was Breeze, where both teams had the same agent composition. This game was a clencher, going all the way to overtime, and G2 were on the edge of losing this series, and they did. Mm. And then they went to dominate the last map. Going from that comeback, they were hyped up. Their next opponent was Team Liquid, and with their momentum, they lost. So they went to losers, and lost again. And didn't make it to champions. This was a very depressing ending to the year. It's even sadder if you look at Red Bull home ground. That was the last tournament of the year where they didn't win a single map. So after this, there were bound to be changes. Cool Dementa was kicked and Kellogg's was benched. And they picked up Hoodie and Meadow in their place. Both were CSGO pro players. Nuki stayed, showing that he had that dog in him, becoming the carry of the team, and Mixwell showed great consistency throughout the time on the team. Because of how well they performed the former year, G2 was invited straight to upper bracket quarterfinals for Challengers 1, where the first showing of the team wasn't great for their standards. Before Challengers 2's open qualifier started, they benched Mixwell and took Kellogg's off the bench. Now there were no players left from the original G2 roster. So they went down to Challengers 2 open qualifier, where like always they owned. They also decimated in the quarterfinal. Then came the team that knocked them out of Challengers 1, Alliance. They bombed on the first map, but they pulled themselves together to win on the next two. Then came the semis, where they were against 10 star. They traded maps and it began to become a heater on Icebox, going to overtime, where G2 clutched it out. It seems that this roster is winning close games more consistently. The finals were against Excel and they played well, winning the series 3-1. With this, they qualified for VCT Stage 1 EMEA Challengers 1 Group Stage. Come on guys. In this format, every team has to go up against each other and the top 3 of the group move forward. G2's first match was against Fnatic. They lost. The second match was against Supermassive. Their last roster lost against these guys. Can the new roster come out on top? They can and did. Now the same situation. Before this match, G2 decided to move Kellogg's on the bench, picking Mixwell back up. Against Ascend. The last roster never won against Ascend. Can this one overcome them? No, they can't unfortunately. The next two matches were blowouts by G2 against BBL Esports and Guild Esports, and with this, they made it out of group stage. In upper quarterfinals, they were matched against Team Liquid. The first map went in the way of Team Liquid, with Yampi carrying. The second map was Icebox. This game started off with Liquid getting a lead on the defender side, but G2 also had a good defender side, and with that, it went to overtime, where G2 took the dub. Sadly, Haven did not have the same result with Liquid taking the game in a quite convincing fashion. With that, M3C, formerly known as Gambit, were waiting for them in the lower bracket. Though it seems that that loss woke up G2. 
G2, winning the series 2-0 in quite a convincing fashion. And then came the rematch, where they crushed even harder, absolutely destroying Liquid, going 13-4 in both maps. And they didn't stop there. Losers finals was up next against Fnatic, but the momentum was in G2's favour, going on to win the series 3-0. All that was left was grand finals against FPX. The winner of this match got to skip the group stage and get straight into quarterfinals of Masters. And G2, with the momentum they had, still lost. FPX has such a solid base of fundamentals that they just stopped G2 in their tracks. Though with this, G2 had qualified to VCT Masters Reykjavik 2022. Sadly, it later came out that FPX couldn't attend this event because of the travel restrictions in Ukraine and Russia at the time, which resulted in G2 getting the spot in quarters and Liquid taking G2 spot in groups. Their first match was against Seda Division, who most people didn't expect would make it this far. They had already exceeded everybody's expectations by making it into quarterfinals. With that being said, G2 won. With that win, they had made it to the upper semifinals, where their next opponent was Loud, who, while not being the most known team, were thought to have a chance at winning the whole tournament. So G2 had a tough match ahead. They lost 0-2 and were sent to losers, where their opponent was PRX, who were the most crazy people in the tournament, having an extremely unorthodox playstyle. I'm not gonna try to fake you out with this one. This game was depressing to watch if you're a G2 fan, but amazing as a PRX fan. They got demolished by Forsaken and Jing. With this, their tournament run came to an end. After Reykjavik, Riot Games announced their plan for the 2023 year of VCT. They would go over to a franchised system, which means that organizations have to apply for a spot in the league. But before the franchising, there were still tournaments to be played, with the first one being Masters Copenhagen. To get there, G2 have to get first, second or third at VCT EMEA Stage 2 to qualify. The group stage was like EMEA Stage 1, with the top 3 of the group going forward. Their first game was against Focus. This was an extremely close one, with the first map going to overtime and the second going to the last round. Though sadly, that would be the last series that they win at this event. Having said that, most series came extremely close, with the three series that went to the third map being lost 11-13. Even with that, they did not make it out of groups. Though there was still a chance to get to champions, even if they missed out on masters, and that was through the last chance qualifier. Having not been able to get there last year, G2 were determined to go the distance at least. Their first opponent was OG, who they lost against at VCT EMEA. This time something was different. This time they got absolutely decimated. Like real bad. Seems like determination wasn't enough. But this wasn't the end. They still had losers where their first opponent was. God damn it. And so their year came to an end. They gave it their bet. Wait, hold on. Huh? They won. G2 did it. They beat the team that they hadn't ever beaten. This was the beginning of the run. They would go on to beat Navi 2-0, decimating them on the second map. 
getting a rematch against Soji, but this time they won 2-0, with Nuki getting 22 kills on both maps. Their opponent at Loser's Finals was Team Liquid. The first game was a close one, but G2 was able to close it out with a string of rounds on the defender's side. The second map was Icebox, and the game got close, but Team Liquid was able to close it out. The third game started off great, with G2 going up 7-5 on the defender side, but then sadly they only got one round on the attack side, meaning that G2's year ended in a whimper. With that, all that the organization could hope for was to get into franchising for the next year of Valorant. Let me talk about how the franchising system works in this game. Unlike other systems, Teams don't have to buy in to get their spot for franchising, rather Riot would pick the organization that they deemed to be the most deserving. To add to that, the VCT spot is valued at about 10 to 15 million. The teams also get a minimum stipend of 600,000. The main points of interest were a strong connection with their fans and stability of their organization. Knowing this, G2 was pretty much in the clear for making it to franchising unless something unorthodox happened. It was the 17th of September when Ocelot, the CEO of G2, posted a video of him parting to celebrate them getting second place in the LEC. All was good until people started to realize who he was parting with. The main source of controversy in this video is this guy, Andrew Tate. This person was just recently banned on pretty much every social media platform for having extremely misogynistic opinions and also other reasons. This became a hot topic quickly. After the drama, Ocelot doubled down, saying he can party with whoever he wants, which was a crazy move. Three days after the drama, Riot Games announced the franchise teams. As everybody expected after everything that happened, G2 wasn't a part of the roster. After this, Riot Games suspended Carlos for breaching LEC 2022 season rules and following that, first he took an unpaid leave, then a week later he stepped down from the CEO position. Though Riot Games thought about the other organizations as well, every team has a chance to get a franchised position through Challenger's Ascension. To get there, you have to go through the Challengers League. If a team wins Challengers Ascension, then that team can play in the International League for two years. After those two years, they're kicked back into Challengers Ascension. Knowing this, G2 didn't give up. The whole roster stepped back from the team, looking for new offers. G2 switched to the NA circuit, picking up Chazam and Dapper from the historically dominant Sentinels roster. Whippy and Penny from their strong V1 eSport roster and Oxy, who was a part of many tier 2 teams. And that's it for now. We'll have to see if this roster goes on to do big things or if it flops. What of the former players now? Well, the most notable is Ardis, having become the star player of a world champion team. Mixwell joined Heretics, where he met back up with Kellox, Avova and Zeke. These are the most notable results. Ocelot has just embraced the lifestyle, only flexing on social media about his life and having some interesting takes. In conclusion, G2 were actually only dominant in the beginning, still having good placements in official events, but never becoming a world champion team. And when it comes to the video posted by Ocelot, you just have to be mindful of what you post. Knowing that the things you do affect the whole company. Oh, and thank you for watching.